welcome everyone to the first ever episode of the Shots Podcast, uh, featuring myself, Gaz Chowdhury, uh, man the myth that is Jake Williams, and the man himself, Matt Scott. Um, yeah, so the purpose of this podcast is to give everyone an insight into um, the type of things that we talk about, the t- things that interest us. Um, and hopefully you guys enjoy listening to it. Um, the first episode is all about the Champions Cup quarterfinals that happened in Cantu a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the results are in. Um, yeah, and the dust is settled, so uh, there's a lot to we discuss. We got top topics. I, I, think, I think people enjoy what we have to talk about, so exactly. let's, uh, let, let's crack into it. But yeah, so let me hand it over to Matt Scott. Uh, you can introduce yourself, and let's get it going. Yo, as you said, I'm Matt Scott. Um, if you're watching this podcast, you probably know who I am, uh, but I represent Team USA, uh, Team Performax. You might have seen me around somewhere. Plugs, um, yeah, plugs. That, that's me. <laughs> Uh, I'm Jake Williams. I play in Air for Germany and hopefully for Team USA again. And, you know, I'm more of a myth than a legend, though, so, you know. <laughs> I'm not like these two. I'm more of a myth, you know, so. <laughs> cool. So, let's, you know, dive straight, like, straight in with our flaming swords um, and get into it. So, we all competed in the Cantu quarterfinal. That's what My it team is. didn't qualify. We got swept, so we're gonna stay off that for a little bit. Um, <laughs> we'll get, we'll get back to it, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. So, the first thing we could talk about is you guys' gen- general um, kind of feel of how the weekend went. What you guys' thoughts were generally? I mean, I'm not. I'm not super surprised by the by the teams that that qualified to the final four. I mean, you got the you got the Italian champions. Um, you got you got us who who I, I think people foresee passing through, and then you know Galatasaray didn't do as well as they pro- probably wish they did. And as you said, you know you got you guys you know could have maybe maybe done a little bit better, but I don't think there's a huge surprise in that pool just because each team was strong. Like there was there was so much uh, so much power in our pool that I don't really think there was a surprise to be had. Mm. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh... That was my first time in Milan playing in that atmosphere, and uh, the fans were really positive and brought a lot of good energy. Um, so, I mean, it was a lot of fun and uh, playing against a bunch of good players and teams. Um, it was definitely a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. These fans are interesting. I think the Cantu fans are unbelievable. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, know, I know, Matt, you've had some beef with the fans in years past with battling when you were playing... Uh, <laughs> In Italy. Oh yeah, man. Um, yeah, I definitely have. Um, we've had some. We've had some barn burners as far as games. Um, we had a had kind of a rivalry there when I was playing with uh when I was playing with Porto Torres. Uh, and, and you know you you were kind of part of that as well. Yeah, I know, yeah. That I know first you know year. All, all about the. Uh, I know you know all about the environment that that Cantu brings. It's such a stand up club, man. I, I really, I really, uh, I really salute Cantu or Brientia, um just for the atmosphere that they give. I think it's one of the best atmosphere. That, that Europe has to offer. Uh, so, I mean, you could speak probably more to that. Yeah, they, they were just, just an incredible um, organization, man. Like, they, they so much work goes on behind the screen, uh, behind the scene, rather, um, that you don't see. And some of the people that work behind the scenes are, like, incredible. I think they're a top-notch organization. And it shows in this kind of show they put. And I think that was as good as a host as I've ever been part of in nearly a decade of playing in those competition I, I think anytime that you can you can showcase high level wheelchair basketball in front of that many people uh i mean that that's a tremendous opportunity so i mean we we all just just came from a from a really really cool opportunity um that not many people get a chance to do no, no. um you know so many people saw it and I, I mean it was some of the best wheelchair basketball players across the world not just mm-hmm. europe um so they it was quite a treat for them too so shouts to uh to Cantu for setting that all mm-hmm. up yeah, you know, the thing that surprised me with the fans, when you get that many people in an environment like that, I was surprised how uh, positive the fans were, win, lose, or draw. They were really positive. Um, even the energy, it was more enthusiasm for their team than vitriol for the other team. And uh, I'm used to playing here. Foul, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm used to playing <laughs> here in Germany where they yell at you if you break your chair and you take a long <laughs> fix it. So, you know, so that was definitely... <laughs> A uh, different perspective for me. Yeah, uh, Italians are good spirited, man. It, it, it was fun to play in that league, no, and no. Uh, you know, usually the fans are 
are pretty good, but I think the fans of Cantu probably are the best around that league. I, I think so too. I think so too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so moving on from the great job that Cantu obviously did organizing the tournament, and you'd expect nothing less. Um, what did you guys think of the group itself? Because I know from my perspective, I definitely felt it was the stronger of the two groups. Um, and um, some of that has to do with, with the sort of teams that qualify, and I'm sure we'll get into that. But for me, from a personal perspective, I think the, you had the three of the winners from, from the first round, all in the same group. Right. Um, so that was a bit strange for me. I don't know, I don't know what you guys think about that. I think, I think there needs to be maybe something changed in terms of the seeding of, of that round as well. I feel you. Um, it, here's the thing is that I actually, I think that that kind of looking at how the seeding is at the moment would, would be advantageous to the, to, to the IWBF, to, to the whole league in, in Europe. It would be advantageous to look at it. But right now, I don't really see it as a problem. Um, I think... I think it would be kind of a waste of a tournament. I won't say waste of a tournament, but I think it would be a little bit strange have you had a, you know, Londell, Hamburg, Turgen in a in a in a group, and then you put a Albacete, Bilbao, Il Union. And you know, I don't think it's a waste of a tournament, but I think when you go to play Europe, you don't want to just get tossed in the same pool as a bunch of, you know, a bunch of people you play against every every week all the time. So I kind of see where they're going with it because they want to separate the different region or they want to separate the same region. But um, as you said, man, I think some people just kind of get, I mean, for lack of a better word, some people get screwed over because mm. you, you you get a group like we had. You know, they, they, they call our group the like the group of death. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think ultimately the best uh, team – win europe uh i wasn't around for the old champions cup so i really can't speak to that but uh i don't mind the the uh, two tournaments uh it gives you a chance to travel and see different places and you know play in different environments um it was just it was just interesting that just the four leaders of the uh of the uh leagues end up in one yeah. in one side i mean I don't know if that's just a one-off or not, but I mean... Yeah, I don't know. So, Jake, you just basically saying you just want an excuse to get out of the house. <laughs> I mean, you know, I always like to travel. I do like to travel, you know. Oh, yeah. Locations. Yeah. And he's single as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Tinder profile right now. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing is, I, I mean, I think no matter how the season's done, there's always going to be a stronger pool and there's going to be a weaker pool. Sure. Um, I think that this year you might have saw one of the most lopsided pools that mm -hmm. there is. So that that's that gives you reason to kind of take a look at it. So I don't totally disagree with what you're saying. Yeah. I got a different perspective as you, uh, than you mm -hmm. a little bit. But, um, you know, with it being this lopsided this year, it's definitely worth taking a look at. I hear that. But so going along from that into something that Jake touched on in terms of the old format where it was the top eight teams in one weekend all together and two groups and then a semi and a final, as opposed to breaking it down into three, three weekends, basically, as opposed to just two. Um, Jake, Jake, jump, Jake can jump in front of the headlines. Yeah. Jake jump in front of the outlines. What outlines? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. No, so, so, I mean, I, I love the old Champions Cup. Just, yeah. I don't know if you remember, but like just arriving at the hotel and everyone arrives and you just kind of like got that feeling that, yeah, this is something massive. Um, yeah. um, I love that. I mean, I haven't been involved in the final four. We didn't make the last year was the first one. I didn't make Wait, what feeling did you get? It's just like, you know, every... <laughs> <laughs> Deep inside. <laughs> Yeah, the tingling feeling. No, but you, you, the feeling was like, you know, you'd arrive and all of the best players in Europe that are playing in Europe, not just the European players, obviously, are all in one place, in one hotel. And I, and I felt that made it special. But in terms of the basketball, um, I, know, I know we were talking about it the other day, Matt. Um, the old one was just like a battle of nutrition. It absolutely. You know, because it was so many games in such a short time. And when you had to be playing your best basketball, you weren't necessarily. It was just about if you recovered better than the other team. So I, I think it definitely works from that perspective. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know what your thoughts are in, in that regard. I think I think times have changed. 
a, a little bit because teams are able to have a little bit more depth within their within their team. Um, I, you know, back back when the we had the old system, I think. I mean, I, not, I shouldn't say back like it was 20 years ago. I mean, it was just a few years ago. But yeah. I think, Getting old, man. Getting I think, old. Yeah, I mean, yo, this is year number 10. <laughs> uh, back in my day. <laughs> Listen up, children. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so um, I, re- I really think that teams have the ability to put more depth in their lineups. You know what I mean? So now there's, there's players coming off the bench that maybe are representing national teams. Yes. Uh, where I mean, you guys did as well this year. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, us, us, for example, or even you know, uh, there's, there's, there's former, there's former, uh, there's former GB players on on, on your on your bench, yeah. which is you know, which is cool. And I think you can, you know, you know, Galatasaray has got some people that represent their their national teams, and um, they're coming off the bench. I think there's a lot more depth within within the team. But like you said, man, that that old that old uh, that old format would just kill you. You play so many games in such little time. Yeah. And I mean, by the end of it, I mean it was just a, it was a marathon. It was it was it was more more than just a basketball tournament. It, it was like it was like doing sprints in the middle of the marathon. Yeah, hundred percent, man, hundred <laughs> percent. Um, I mean, have you ever done a sprint though? <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Listen, no. it might not look no. like I'm sprinting. It's because uh, the world around me slows down. It's like that yeah. speed force oh, from yeah. the flash. <laughs> It's like the time stands still. You just don't realize it. <laughs> I, what I was going to say, though, is uh, I think that this new format is more challenging to get through. Um, haven't had some success at the, at the, old, uh, at the old format. Um, won a couple of those. But the, um, I think the, the format to get there was a bit easier. Um, oh, yeah. I think just that one tournament and then kind of just showing up, it doesn't it doesn't allow you to be seen by the other teams as much. Mm. It doesn't allow you to be scouted and, 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 you know, put some video out on you. Yeah. Um, nobody really knows your, a lot of your tendencies that you just, you're just kind of coming in and you're just, you're just playing blindly. Um, which, which the teams I was a part of, it really, really benefited us yeah. um, because, you know, the, the league that I played in when I was playing in the Turkish league was, was really weak. Yeah. Um, so we weren't able to play sometimes our best ball or play our best lineups. Um, but then when we came out to Europe, that's when we were really challenged. So um, I, th- I thought it was a lot easier to get in. And now having these two tournaments to get through, man, it, it's it's tough. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. I hear that. Because I think also, like, just the amount of video that's out there, I think teams can be better prepared than they used to be. I agree. Um, I, t- I totally agree with yeah, that. And I'm not Which sure is- if every team takes advantage of it, but I think the opportunity to be better prepared for every single team is is, is way better. Yeah, I agree with that, and I we, we I know we've definitely taken advantage of it. Um, it it's, it's it's helped us tremendously. Um, we we got some, you know, we were we happened to be in that in that sort of easier group to get over. Yeah. Um, which kind of put us in that really tough group to get to get out of yeah. it. Um, but having to take a look at you know what you guys did and mm. uh, you know what what Lindell was doing and what Galatasaray was doing mm. uh, against formidable opponents. Yeah. And I mean that was that's that's valuable, man. No doubt. Yeah. yeah, our group, uh, I mean, our group was pretty easy. Like, I don't think there's any reason why, no matter how good you are, no team should win every game in the preliminaries by, by 50 points. Like, no. unless, uh, I mean, that's, I mean, for a competition that you want at a high level, um, I know a couple teams dropped out and stuff like that. Say, you got to, yeah, I mean, you know, that you, you spoke on, so you spoke on something the other day when we were talking, uh, you were talking about, you know, teams kind of trying to stay at lower levels so they can get more, I don't know, glorified by, I don't, I don't know, by their club because they want to, yeah, they want to they win lower, lower divisions or they don't want to come up. So, I mean, we kind of suffered in our first round because yeah. teams didn't want to, teams didn't want to come. There was two teams that backed out. Um, for whatever reason, yeah. I think I, I think our group kind of suffered because. Of- but it is hard as well. Like our sport can change so much year to year, um, and that, that's point. such a big problem. So I mean, if you, if you just give an example of someone like Porto Torres when you were there, yeah, um, you know, for two years, um, well, you improved every year, and then you guys, ha- then you guys had a few GB players the second year, and you were really able to compete. But right. that first year when you got there, you changed the the fortunes of that club just by being able to bring someone in 
Now, if I lose those guys, they are unable to compete. Um, so it's very, I can see the case that it's very hard from an organizational standpoint for the teams themselves when you can have such massive fluctuations with the level of performance. Because uh, you can't account for who you're going to sign for the, exactly. the next year. So, I mean, you step up to the big pool, but all your big, you know, big fish kind of swim away, then, then, then what happened? Yeah, yeah. exactly. That. I mean, that. You're totally right. I mean, look at Gran Canaria over in uh, in Spain. Yeah. Uh, that's a that's you know a huge huge example because I mean you get you get Richard Nord and um, and Jared uh, Jared Rambula and Jorge Sanchez. Yeah. I mean those are those are those are some awesome players. Yeah. Whereas I don't think I I don't even know who what their roster looked like last year. But now yeah, suddenly exactly. they're they're able to to kind of surprise some teams and really maybe knock them off. So. Do they move up now, or you know, maybe they yeah. maybe they lose some of those big fish next year? So then, exactly. then what happens, you know? So, uh, no, nah, you, you you make a really good point there. Yeah, because I've yeah, been, sorry, but, go on, Joe. But I mean, in Spain, they're in the middle of the standing still. So you got you know four or five other teams in Spain that could have you know competed in the Champions League, but decided to stay in Euro League One or yeah. two or whatever. And I get there's a whole point system and everything, mm-hmm. but when so many teams drop out, they uh. I mean, I don't know how it works, but there has to be opportunities for those teams to be able to come up. Yeah, because I mean, I know like London Titans took up the opportunity because there was a mess up in the organization, um, yeah. and they basically got told by um, the the powers that be that this right. is available, and for them, they were like, "Cool, we'll take it," because we just want to be in Europe. Um, they were under no illusions that they're not a Euroleague one team. I mean, not a single athlete on that team is a, full, a professional athlete or a full-time athlete. Right. Um, so, 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 yeah, those things are like, even though I, I feel like there's many more, I, th- I think the talent pool in general has gotten bigger, so the average player is way better now than they used to be. So it yeah. means there's way more spread of, of talent in teams. I still think um, that... In, in terms of how the clubs are operating, there's still a disconnect between um, what the opportunities are available to them are and how well the organization um, runs the tournament itself. That I mean, some sense. of it is hard because obviously yeah. if you take something like, like we go back to Grand Canary and Port Torres, almost opposite examples, mm-hmm. yourself, Philip Pratt and George Bates leave right. and the fortunes changes to where Grand Canary have signed three um, potential world class players Definitely. and their fortunes once they figured it out they're getting better and better but you wouldn't have necessarily known that at the start of the season that's right that's um, 100% um, or at I mean, the end of last you never, season you never know how that's going to work out either I mean totally. me, me, George, me George and Phil could have absolutely flopped you know and not, awesome. not played well together at all yeah um, you know yeah just, but at the end of the day your flopping is still better than a lot of average players you know that's true. 80, 90 percent. You know what I mean? I mean, without without trying to throw any teams under the bus, um, I, I, I look at a team like Julianova last year, yes. who I thought had an incredibly talented roster. Mm. Um, they just didn't have uh, team chemistry. I, I don't know what it was. Team yeah. spirit, team chemistry. I, I don't know what it was, but they they just didn't um, they didn't have the year that I thought that they would have. Because mm. um, every time we played them, I was like, oh man, like we we need to get up for this. Like this is going to be one of those games, and we just end up running it off by yeah. like twenty points. Yeah. And I thought their I thought their roster might have been more talented than ours. Mm. Um, so I think that could, that you know, like I said, no no throwing nobody on the bus. Shout out to that team. Shout out to <laughs> Shout no, out you know. It's, you know that it was that's that years in the past anyway. So, yeah. so um but I just think um I think that could happen to any team, you know, team chemistry is huge. Yeah. So I think it's hard, like that's what I mean, like in terms of organizationally, how you allocate points. I've I I I'm not sure if there's a solution the kind of disparity yeah. in some of the groups. So because we had a relatively tough group. I mean, Hamburg almost made the playoffs again in Germany. They, I mean, they, I mean, they're not a bad team. Uh, the no, Schichters have not. just beaten Galatasaray. Um, we won our group, and our fourth team was Lacane, who I, I think is, at worst, a top three team in, in France. Yeah. So, you know, so we had a tough, tough group uh, yeah. to get through. I know any of yeah. those teams may come to your group. They definitely qualify for EuroLeague 1. So, there, so, there, it, but sure. it's impossible from an organization standpoint. How do you do it? I, I can't think of a solution. 
it's it's tough, man. There's no uh, solidarity for how how a club is gonna gonna maintain their players and, and what what you know what they're gonna do the next year. Yeah, this has been a this has been a crazy crazy season, man. Yeah, as far as like as far as Europe and as far as uh as, as all all the leagues, man. Totally. I, I, I mean, there's nobody undefeated. No. If I if I'm if I'm right, yeah. Um, there's no there's no clear cut favorite. In my opinion, yeah. I mean, I mean, maybe maybe some people say you're a union because I mean, until you knock off a champion, the champion exactly. is a favorite. Because we know at their exactly. best, they're the best team in Europe. Yeah, so, absolutely. So you and, know and that. I so at their best, they're the best team in Europe. So I'm not. I wouldn't even. Uh, I wouldn't even try to ar- argue that because I, I I truly believe that once you, when you're a champion, you exactly. come back with pretty much the same damn team. Yeah. Uh, until somebody knocks you out, then then you're the champion until then. No doubt. Uh, but besides besides them, but even that, them, they've taken plenty of losses. Yeah. I, 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 I've been, I've been yeah, kind yeah. of checking out into teams that people didn't really expect them to. Mm-hmm. Um, I know, I know, Lindell's taken some losses. We've taken yeah. losses. Um, yeah. You guys have taken losses. Yeah. Um, man, it's it's been a crazy season, man. This it is, this, I think, this is a historical year, man. I think, and I think it just shows where the game is at. Like we were saying, yeah. like there's just so many more players. Um, and I'm sure we'll get into it in a future episode about how the game is developing. But let's round off the Euro Cup now right. with, you know, the elephant in the room, so to speak. And that is the, the, the accusations of match fixing that are going on. Um, there's been a public post made. And I, I, no, and let's, let's, let's keep it 100. Let's keep it 100. Let's, let's talk about the allegations that have been made specifically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. what were the allegations? So the allegations, the allegations is this, and I don't want to read it because, like, like, you know, I'm not going to oh, get a sued read. in the first episode. Like, getting well, sued in the first episode is not the forum. one. Even though it's a public forum, we yeah, can't I don't know. I don't know. We, yeah, I don't know. We, we don't have access to that kind of lawyer lawyerage here. <laughs> 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 but what I'm going to say is the general paraphrasing of it is that you guys basically threw the game against Cantu for some reason, uh, or basically to keep Galatasaray out in that last game. Um, from the perspective of someone who's not, the allegation is into words and I'm not involved in, um, I just know that there's nothing worse than you throwing a game. I, I think there's nothing worse in, our, in, in sport in general. And from my perspective, watching the game, it didn't appear that way. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, we'd lost to them by two the, na- the day before. Was yeah. it a surprise? Yes. But from watching it, I mean, you guys took part. I thought they played great, and I didn't see the alleged so, fixing so of it. So I, I, I've got a lot to say about this. I mean, because obviously I think it's a ridiculous claim. Mm. Um, anybody anybody that, that knows, knows me personally or knows this club just, just knows that I mean, we go out to win every game. I mean, what what kind of a statement it would have been to go into the group of death and come out with three three wins, three clear wins? That's that's all we wanted. That's and the first we two were blowouts as well. You blew us yeah. and Galatasaray out. That's all we wanted. We wanted to come in there and show all of Europe we're here to play. Like we're, we we want we want to be champions this year. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that would have been a huge statement. By losing that, we we gained nothing. By losing that, we gained nothing. Um, I I honestly. I question the credibility of anybody that is uh, that is that is questioning whether we won or lost the game on purpose. Um, but I, I've only heard of of one allegation from one individual, and uh, I question that credibility because that same person uh, was a sore loser a couple a couple years ago against Lindell, and or I'm, I don't know if they lost against Lindell or Lindell lost some game. Uh, yeah. Maybe maybe you guys remember that. And yeah. they were accused of, of, of taking a game just because the the, the the tournament didn't go that person's way. Um, I, I, you know, the one thing I'll say is that there's nothing more disrespectful than this claim. Uh, this is super disrespectful, not only to us. I, I feel I feel very disrespected by it, to be honest. But I think Cantu should also feel extremely dis- uh, yeah. disrespected, man. They played their ass off. Yeah, they played yeah. awesome. Um, those guys had tremendous performances that shouldn't be overlooked in a, in one of the biggest tournaments in Europe. And then you know, now, now you just want to discredit them like that? Like, come on. Like, they, they should be applauded. They were at home. They played an awesome game. Congratulations to them. I shook their hand, and, you know, that, like, like a man does after a game. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, whenever you get in the group of death, quotation marks, um, 
Um, every team is good, obviously. And Cantu, you know, they went to the final of Europe last year. And they're and uh, they're the favorites to win Italy this year. Um, they're a very good team. They they played really really well and they deserve to win that game 100. Um, percent It was a three point game at the end of the day. And I don't um, I haven't seen too many teams that tank a game, but the signs that I see are you you rest some of your marquee players. Um, you know maybe play them five minutes or maybe don't play them at at all that that's the most common way i feel like yeah. and i mean um the i mean the person that was accusing us of tanking the game didn't play one of his marquee players in the in the third game yeah. so yeah they won but what so were they tanking then i don't I'm know gonna, i'm gonna stop you right there for a second jake because yeah. i i want to know do they really believe that our loss to Cantu is more strong than their 37 point loss to us and, I, and I'll repeat that. Their 37-point loss to us. It was the worst loss in the whole tournament, probably the worst loss of the whole year. They got absolutely slaughtered, and they need to take, they need to take responsibility for that. I, I'll, I'll go, you know, I, I mean no respect to the players of Galatasaray because they are tremendous players, and I, and I know they, they played their hearts out. Yeah. Um, they, wanted, they wanted to go through. Um, they wanted to go through to the, to the Champions Cup final. I, I, I know they did. But that 37-point loss is the reason why they're out. Mm. Not, not, the re- yeah. not us losing to Cantu. They can't – I mean, we can't, we can't save them from that. 37-point loss. There should Jeez. be no allegations there. There Jeez. should be no allegations there. I'm just saying. Yeah, I mean, all the players on Galatasaray, I really respect. Um, I play them – a lot on the national stage and other big games and i mean they're very very talented players but i mean um you know did i go into the Cantu game thinking that we were gonna lose no obviously not uh i actually didn't even know the situation i thought that once galatasaray beat albacete that it was set in stone that and that game was just a game we were but, worried that we were out when we lost yeah when <laughs> when Cantu started celebrating i i didn't know what was happening i'm like why are they celebrating? you don't know what's they're, happening ever so it's not, not a surprise <laughs> Well, you got to worry about your own team. Uh, I mean, you know. I no, mean, we were concerned, though. Yes, yeah, so yeah. I had no idea. I think I even asked you, like, are we out? Like, why are they celebrating? Like, I have no idea. It's not and like we entered, you know, guys. So it's not like we entered this game uh, knowing exactly what the situation was, what the point spread was, yeah. who needed to win, who needed to lose. We just wanted to win the shit. Yeah. That's all we wanted yeah. to do. We wanted to win the game, and we wanted to uh, to, to sweep the tournament. Mm. Yeah, we didn't do that. I can tell you when I lost when I left that uh, when I left that tournament, I was absolutely disappointed with that game. Yeah, the yeah. other two games, two yeah. games, super super thrilled about yeah. that game. I was, you know, I really beat myself up about it. I I know I know personally I had a bad game. Right. Um, kid, but players players do that. Players have bad games. That doesn't mean you're 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 try to do it on purpose. Like, yeah, because you, you were down three, and I, I know you attempted a three at the buzzer. If you're trying to tank I'll, a game I'll, I'll from that. the outside, I, I, I'm saying that's the best acting job ever. Yeah. yeah. To try and shoot a three when yeah. you're down three. I mean, it got blocked, but so maybe you <laughs> maybe you shot it into Adolfo's hand. I mean, I don't know. Was it Adolfo or Sega who blocked you? I have we no cho- idea. We choreographed the whole game before, yeah. before, before yeah. it happened. Come on, give me a break, man. Like, yeah. I, honestly, I, I think um, I'm going to keep it super respectful here. I just I just think that the the tournament didn't didn't go a certain person's way. Uh, so that person lashed out and and tried to throw some some extreme shade in a public forum. Which I don't think anybody really finds that credible. Um, I, as being a part of the situation, not many people come to me with it. There's a lot of you know, there's there's not, I don't know. People walk around it, but I want to know: Do people actually believe that it happened? Well, the thing is, that, like I've been asked, um, like, oh yeah, so, but I've been asked in a way which is like, just because it's out there, there's some credibility to it. Do, do you know yeah. what I mean? Like the whole yeah. no smoke without fire thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I know that the, the perception, you know, even if people are believing it at like a 5% rate, they still, the, the seed of doubt is like planted that, oh, yeah. maybe they did throw it. Yeah. 
Um, and yeah, people have and asked I'm, because I'm I was obviously there. Look up, like, yeah, and I've and I've said like no, they didn't have like Cantu just had a hell of a game. They got the win. Um, I'm still I'm still salty as hell because I think they got the calls all fucking weekend. But that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but even in that game, but that's not the reason you guys lost. It wasn't the refs. It's not the reason we lost ultimately. But um, yeah, I thought in a close game. I think it was a close game. It was a well played game. I thought you guys didn't play as well as you had all tournament, and they played their best game. Yeah. yeah. And they're champions of Italy. Um, you know, I've been part of that organization. I know how much pride those guys have there. But if, and they, you and see they them after they won, they, I thought they won the damn Super Bowl. Like they, yeah, no, they, no. Were, they were incredibly happy, and they played like that the whole game. They played like they wanted to be there. Yeah. I'm not saying that we played like we didn't want to be there. Like we, yeah. man, we had we had as much intensity as 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 we always do. They. You could tell that they just wanted it, and yeah. and, and they got it. You yeah, know yeah. that. You know, and they kept it fortunate. close where it became a make or miss game. You know, that's yeah. what it comes down to. Like you, you keep it close enough, it becomes yeah. a make or miss game, and it's going to be what it's going to be. I guess my final thought on the whole thing is that we would have benefited in no way by Galatasaray not advancing. I mean, why would we keep them out? Like we beat them by thirty-seven. Like why would we? I mean, I have no fear of playing them again. Like I said, I respect all the players and everything. But, I mean, had they beat El Union in Hamburg and we see them again, I mean, I wouldn't feel that, you know, oh, my gosh, like, we have no chance now. I mean, we beat them by 37. I mean. Yeah. I've, I, you know, I've got the, you know, I have the opportunity of being quite close with some of the players. Mm-hmm. And I, I can say that my – Facebook inbox tells me that not even their entire team believes these allegations. So um, take that for what it's worth. Yeah, I mean, there was no sign of it watching anyway. So Mm -hmm. that tells you what. So final part of the podcast, and this will basically become legendary, but this is the section (laughs) that we call... Actually, you know what? I'm not even going to introduce it. This is all about Jake Williams right now. So Jake Williams, take it away. (laughs) Okay, so every podcast has their version of, you know, the shame game or uh, donkey of the day. So we got a little spin on that called uh, Goober of the Week. (laughs) Now, even though these two think they know who I'm going to give it to, uh, you know, they are wrong because it is not going to a single person. However, Goober of the Week is going to anybody that tanks a game. I respect all players who try their hardest and play 100% no matter who the opponent is. Wanting to win has nothing to do with your skill level or talent ability. Players that give 100% are the kind of players that coaches love to coach and that players love to play with. But what I can't respect are the players and coaches who show up to games and tournaments not only willing to lose, but preparing to lose and wanting to lose. Get up. now, now, now you'd be hard pressed to find any professional athlete that comes into a game prepared to lose. However, with certain coaches and management is where you find telltale signs of the opposite. For example, coaches that not only rest stars but tell some of your best players not suit up for a game simply because you would rather win a lesser tournament to gain 12th in Europe than wanting to compete at a better tournament and possibly finish 7th or 8th in Europe. It is because of this issue that qual- that, that qualifiers to Euro Cup are so unbalanced and thus makes the Champions League pool so unbalanced as well. If you're not going to support growth in the sport, that's all right by me. Just play for fun. But what I cannot support is the blatant disrespect of players by the coaches instructing their players to throw a game. As my college coach used to say, if you're not part of the solution, you're, you're part of the problem. And the only opportunity is being taken away is by the individuals who would rather take the easy way out instead of looking in the mirror and figuring out a way to get themselves and their teams better and more ma- and more motivated to play on a bigger stage. And that is your Goober of the Week. If you have any submissions for Goober of the Week, I think we're setting up some kind of social media page or something. Yeah. Send yeah. your submissions. You can remain uh, anonymous. We won't say your name. I mean, so well, many Because we're, we're, we're going to set up, we're gonna set up uh, a Facebook page for this. Yeah, too. yeah. So it's all going to be... You know, keep keep it posted. We're gonna be starting all the social media and everything else. So. Yeah. So so submit your Goober of the Week submissions to Jake. Joe, you know, Jake, you would have you would that would have been an awesome mic drop uh, opportunity. Yeah. Not those whack headphones. Yeah. On. <laughs> I know because apparently Gaz Chowdhury told me that I had to buy some headphones for. Yeah, this you thing. did. Yeah. You I know, think we kind of, I, I think mean, we kind of make this look look good. Like, well, I, mean, I don't know, I'm Matt. Sure you might be. Though. Anything that hides your ears, Jake, is a, is a plus. Yo, yeah. Like. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, 
I've been told that they're my worst feature, so I mean, I don't know, you know what I mean? Uh, I mean, yeah. So well, speaker cooper of the weeks, you know what I mean? Yeah. Basketball's all done. I'm going to be an AT and T operator. Yeah. Well, Jake, Jake was auditioning for ESPN right now. <laughs> you look like a young Max <laughs> Kellerman, anyway. Who uh, is going going worldwide? Who is Max Kellerman? I have no idea. Who, Max who Kellerman. Is, who is First that? take. Who is she? <laughs> he. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, shots fired. Anyway. We're done. Shots podcast episode one in the books. Over yeah. and out. See ya. Later.